Here's an interesting algebra problem. We have the product of three consecutive terms, x plus 2, x plus 3, and x plus 4, and it all equals 336. Now, you could multiply this all out, and you'd get a cubic equation, which can be messy. But there's a much more elegant path, and it's hidden in the structure of the problem itself. The straightforward but pretty laborious method is to just multiply out the entire expression on the left. You could do it, but, as you might guess, that's often a trap in problems that look like this. We'll start by multiplying the first two binomials, x plus 2 and x plus 3. This gives us x squared plus 5x plus 6. Next, we multiply this quadratic by the final term, x plus 4. And this expansion gives us a full cubic equation. To find the roots of this polynomial, we first need to set the equation to 0. Subtracting 336 from both sides leaves us with this cubic. Now, you could try to solve this using something like the rational root theorem, which would mean testing all the integer factors of 312. That sounds tedious. This is the brute force trap. There has to be a better way. Let's go back to the original problem and see if we can find some kind of pattern or symmetry. If you look at the terms x plus 2, x plus 3, and x plus 4, you might notice they're symmetric around the middle one. This central term, x plus 3, is going to be the key. Let's make a substitution to really take advantage of this symmetry. Let's define a new variable. We'll call it y and set it equal to that central term, x plus 3. So how can we write the other two terms using our new variable y? The term x plus 2 can be rewritten as x plus 3 minus 1, which is just y minus 1. And in the same way, x plus 4 can be written as x plus 3 plus 1, which is y plus 1. When we substitute these back into the original equation, the problem transforms into this much cleaner looking expression. We can rearrange the terms a bit and notice that we're multiplying y minus 1 by y plus 1, which is a classic pattern for a difference of squares. Their product is simply y squared minus 1. Now we can distribute the y into the parentheses. This simplifies to the cubic equation y cubed minus y equals 336. This is a huge improvement over the messy cubic we got from the brute force method. We're looking for an integer solution here. Notice that y cubed has to be just a little bit bigger than 336 since we're subtracting y. So let's test some integer cubes that are in that neighborhood. 6 cubed is 216, which is a bit too small. 7 cubed is 343. That looks very promising. So let's test if y equals 7 is actually a root of our equation. 7 cubed minus 7 is 343 minus 7, which is exactly 336. This confirms that y equals 7 is our solution. Now that we have the value for y, we can go back and solve for our original variable, x. Remember that we defined y to be x plus 3. So we have the equation 7 equals x plus 3. To get x by itself, we just subtract 3 from both sides. And that gives us our solution, x equals 4. Finally, it's always a good idea to do a quick sanity check. Let's plug our answer back into the original equation. Substituting 4 for x gives us 4 plus 2 times 4 plus 3 times 4 plus 4, which is just 6 times 7 times 8. 6 times 7 is 42, and 42 times 8 is 336. Our solution is correct. Now, a cubic polynomial can have up to three roots. 
We've found one of them, but we should check if there are any others. Let's go back to our simplified cubic equation in terms of y. Since we know that y equals 7 is a root, the factor theorem tells us that y minus 7 must be a factor of this polynomial. A quick way to perform the division is using synthetic division. We write down the coefficients of our cubic, which are 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 336. We bring down the first coefficient, 1. Then we multiply it by our root, 7, and add it to the next coefficient, 0, to get 7. We repeat this process. 7 times 7 is 49, which we add to negative 1 to get 48. Finally, 7 times 48 is 336, which we add to negative 336 to get a remainder of 0. The numbers on the bottom row are the coefficients of our resulting quadratic. So our cubic factors into y minus 7 times the quadratic y squared plus 7y plus 48. If there are any other roots, they have to come from this quadratic factor. Let's find those roots using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula tells us that the roots are negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. For our quadratic, a is 1, b is 7, and c is 48. Plugging these in, we can now solve for y. Inside the square root, we have 7 squared, which is 49 minus 4 times 48, which is 192. The term inside the square root simplifies to negative 143, signaling that we are dealing with complex roots. We can pull out the imaginary unit i and split the fraction to write the complex roots for y more clearly. But we're not looking for y, we're looking for x. So now we substitute x plus 3 back into the equation, which means x is y minus 3. To find x, we just need to subtract 3 from the real part of our complex y roots. Combining the real parts, negative 7 halves minus 3 gives us negative 13 halves. And so, we arrive at the two complex solutions for x. So, to summarize, x equals 4 is the only real solution to our original problem, while the other two roots live in the complex plane. We can also get some visual confirmation by plotting the functions for the left and right sides of our original equation and seeing where they intersect. Here, the blue curve is our cubic function, and the green line is the constant 336. The real solutions are the x-coordinates where these two graphs cross, and visually, it's pretty clear that they only intersect at a single point. Highlighting this point, shows its coordinates are 4, 336. The x-coordinate is 4, which is exactly the solution we found with algebra. The main takeaway here is this. The problem looked like it was going to be a complicated cubic equation. But by noticing the symmetry in the initial setup and using a simple substitution, we were able to transform it into a much easier problem. It's a great example of a key principle in math. Always look for the underlying structure before you jump into brute force calculations. If you enjoyed this little puzzle, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.